Hello and welcome back. This week we're going to have a look at this Hornby Railways model, RO68, and it's the uh, BR Class 25 diesel in the blue livery. Model dates from uh, around 1977 when it uh, first appeared in the catalogue, and I believe in this form they were made through to 79. Um, I picked this up from a model railway show in July, and I, I showed it briefly in a video at that point, and um, a number of times since, uh, somebody who watches my videos, Kev Brygrave, has mentioned he'd love to see the model in a little more detail. So here we go. So it's a, a really fine looking illustration on, on the front of the box there. And uh, here it says, a multi-purpose diesel intended for use on all regions of British Rail. And here it clearly states this is just an artist's impression of the locomotive. I think I've pointed out before that this uh, this box is fairly tatty, but probably done its job over the time. A little bit of sellotape there, I think that the flap's missing at that end of the box. So if we just pop this down, we'll have a look at the uh, the 77 catalogue for a moment. And here we can see it's a, a model new for that year, and this is the, the catalogue we've seen a number of times recently. We can't get away from 1977, it seems. But there's a, a number of uh, significant models, I think, in this year. And uh, they did release the model in uh, BR Green livery at the same time, although I'm not quite sure why they would want to show them on, on separate pages there. And the uh, the green liveried model was uh, RO72, but uh, we'll save that model for another day. Apparently, I think the uh, the blue model was, was the more popular seller at the time. I believe uh, this model we see it today went on till uh, 79 and, and then uh, in 1980 model number changed when the, the model was upgraded to a paint finish and I think that lasted till um, perhaps 84 I think the the model for the model number for that was 326 I believe there may have been a, a break in production and the, the model was re-released perhaps upgraded I'm not quite sure different model number it's uh, our uh, 877 so model numbers they're, they're quite confusing things aren't they so uh, i think if we whip open the box and we'll, we'll have a swift look at it in the in the white polystyrene tray we'll just ease that open and we'll see if we can encourage her out of the box so the polystyrene as usual makes quite an awful noise when it rubs against the, uh, the cardboard so sadly no paperwork with this model but um, as you can see, she looks to be in uh, fairly tidy condition, doesn't she? I think that is just a self-coloured plastic. In the uh, the painted version, didn't follow till the till nineteen eighty. We'll just bring her out from underneath those gantries and out through points seventeen and number eighteen there onto the inside line. And we'll switch the points. Just listen to the great noise she makes on the rails as she comes past and smoothly past those Baltic tanks. So we've got the uh, the price list for July 77 here. And when she was released, the uh, the blue class 25 RO68 was uh, just a £9.50. Green version also, £9.50. Seems quite reasonable, doesn't it? And I think uh, I paid uh, £30 for this at the, uh, the Model Railway show last July. So we'll just pop that down and we'll have a swift look over the model. And when we saw her in the uh, polystyrene tray, she looks in fairly good condition, doesn't she? And uh, I think uh, she genuinely is. I think she's had a very sheltered life as a model. Have a look around. There really is some fine detail here, isn't there? Look at that. Lovely stuff going on just around the, the cab door. That is very, very intricate, intricate, shall I say. Although it could let, be let down a little by this uh, rather crude clip here holding the, the chassis and the body together. There's four of those on the model. But uh, I suppose you've got to hold the things together somehow. It really, it really is quite quite lovely, the detail. When you look around this, you can see window wiper detail moulded into the, the glazing unit. The old uh, head codes here do light up if you have a look at the uh, insert picture. Although you've got to run it rather quickly on my layout to get those to show up so uh, it's, a, it's not quite as interesting a feature as you might think and again lovely vents and, and background detail behind the vents molded into it i think that's quite lovely and 
really terrific across the top. Now, uh, that little hole there, somebody commented when I showed this model before that originally you know, there were plans to have a, a smoke unit fitted to this for exhaust. The exhaust effect, that would have been quite nice, wouldn't it? We'll have a look on the inside in a moment. But it is quite a thing to, to develop a hole right the way through a model, so there must have been plans. And lovely vent there, there's a little bit of infill in the painting, I think, gone on there. But look at that riveting, I think that's really quite terrific. And there is some a little cab detail we can see there, and a touch of overspray, I think, by the looks of it there on the, the, the yellow paintwork. A tiny bit of detail under there between the buffers. So uh, they haven't painted those up in a separate colour, I suppose that's all cost, isn't it? And we've got the, uh, the plastic um, coupling there with a the metal hook. I believe this one's incorrect. I think the one on the other end may be correct. It's been replaced at some point. I've never got around to replacing it myself. Again, we've got uh, the uh, power bogey at this end with a traction tyre just on the one side of the model. So we get pick up from here and here. So it is quite reliable over the point work as we see it makes a beautiful noise over the brakes in, in the track work. Uh, very nice click click noise which is very pleasing when you're running the model. And there we go, we've got uh, Made in Great Britain and uh, Hornby's name there. So it really is quite a pretty thing isn't it? So coming around the uh, second radius curve there, we'll take her up alongside the station just beyond Points number nine, the double crossover there, and we've got a bit of a parcels train waiting in the passing loop, so straight through the points, switch them again, and we'll back up and push those wagons and that uh, full parcels coach back along to the end of the loop there, just far enough so we know points number 10, the crossover back onto the uh, inside line. All seems fairly well behaved through there, doesn't it? Just listen to it with all those wheels now. And switch the points behind them. And off around the layout and into the distance. I think it's a, a terrific looking train. So she's quite a smooth runner. And it's a rather interesting construction. We've got that uh, what appears to be a glazing unit, but you you only see really the, the cab ends through the model, and it adds a, a lot of rigid support to the vehicle. And so quite a lot of wiring, and it's interesting metal blocks, connection blocks there, and I think as I showed in the, the video back in July, that one of these uh, clips was floating around, and I, I've just shared one of the ports, as it were, to, to connect it back, and we've got the diodes there, which give us this uh, uh, theoretically great directional lighting but uh, as I say you do have to run it quite rapidly to get get those to show up as we saw in that uh, insert picture a little earlier on so I think the, uh, the cab details are separate plastic parts and this glazing unit just sits on top of the black plastic chassis and there is a, a large metal weight in the bottom there if we, we can see that and uh, we've got the, the Rimfield motor in there and it is a fairly lively little thing. Although the pulling power is quite restricted, I think, just because it, it doesn't have that much weight. And I think if it had the, the four tires, it would have been a, a much stronger model. Um, but as it is, it, it's just got moderate pulling power, especially on the, on the incline. You can see that black chassis runs all the way down there and the, the bogies just, just clip in. If I just... Uh, Grab a screwdriver here and we'll just uh, unclip the, the motor bogey. We'll just uh, ease that clip out there. He says, hopefully. There we go. And we'll just have a look at the, the motor bogey. And that is the uh, ring filled motor and the, the set of gears on there. We'll just spin that around and have a, have a look at the other side. It is all wired in. These retain the brushes there. So I'm just going to reattach that. We'll just clip that back in. I'll see if I can uh, release the, the dummy end to have a look at. Again, these are lovely heavy wheels, which I think um, account for that lovely sound she has when she's running on the track. Let's just see if I can release that one there. 
pop the screwdriver down. There we go, see we've got the, the pickup connection there, just onto the, the metal block there. That just sits into this plastic bogey frame and the, the wheels are mounted in quite loosely as it looks, but it does, uh, it's quite a successful. I thought something quite floppy like that wouldn't wouldn't work, but I think the, uh, the weight of the wheels hold it nicely onto the track. So we'll just pop that back into place there. Oops, not quite in. And it has that interesting arrangement. Perhaps I'll just uh, lift that, whoops. We'll lift that one out again. Whereas that uh, support there is mounted off center. Uh, I think I meant, might have mentioned earlier that I think the model sometimes appears like it lies over when it's running. I don't know whether anybody else has got one of these models. Also the, the green variation I have as well also has that same characteristic. It occasionally looks like it is uh, just lying over to one side, especially when pulling a load, but the bogies sit flat onto the um, onto the chassis there. So quite an interesting arrangement. Rear bogey also sits flat in there, not rear bogey, I suppose it's uh, the motor bogey. Yes, it makes contact with, with the chassis. So they are in, in a fixed position, theoretically. Again, nice detail on the under frame there. So we'll just pop that down. And we'll have a, a swift look at the, uh, the body molding here. I suppose we'll just have a quick look at the, this service sheet. I find it quite interesting. I think these principles of uh, the way they're putting these bogies together and the bogey frames around these uh, ring-filled motor blocks um, are used across a number of models. It's a, quite a flexible system and it seems to have been quite successful. Um, although I think uh, I think possibly four, four traction tyres would have been better in the pickups at this end, but then it's still leaving you short of pickups and perhaps it's better spread across both ends of the locomotive and there's that interesting arrangement I showed earlier still it's quite nice to see how the whole things go together and there's that uh, that uh, hook on the coupling definitely got the wrong wrong one on the wrong one one end I have to uh, do my best to try and find another one we'll just pop that down we'll just have a look at the, the body molding whilst we've got it offered a good look over the top yes we should have a we'll look at that that hole there and if we have a look at the the interior of the chassis there that lines up with this hole there and we've been informed that perhaps there were plans to put a, a smoke unit in under there so quite an interesting idea i'm not sure whether they did ever have a, a diesel with a working exhaust system in the, in the range Hornby Railways or trying Hornby. So there we go, that part of the, the molding would have lined up with that, uh, the hole there. Interesting idea. And we've got a little bit of uh, um, melting in the plastic. I'm never quite sure whether that's the, the reaction of the, uh, the she, the, not the sheathing, the, uh, the plastic coating on the cables having a, an effect in the, in the plastic. So I've heard different people say different things about that. We've got some overspray in there. It's quite a neat and tidy thing. Very light plastic, this it has to be said. So some of the earlier models really are much heavier. And that's uh, the illuminated head code. I don't know whether we can, we can see in the end there, it's sort of semi-translucent there with the, the number stuck on, on the front side. But really, Quite a step forward in, in their molding. I think very, very good detail. If you just look at the model closely there, as she comes down the straight, you will see her just lying over ever so slightly, as I mentioned before. Now, I was mistaken when I described that uh, dummy bogey as lying flat against the chassis. She does actually sort of float or pivot on that point, that support I pointed out. And being off center, it does sort of encourage it to lie to one side a little. And just looking at these, uh, these models here and, and the blue one lying over you can see the green one also has a tendency to lie over although it's slightly more pronounced on the blue version i haven't had time to try and work this uh, green model into the video today we'll have to have a look at it another day but it does have the same tendency to to lie over like that i think it's especially more so under load but this one's seen a lot more track time if we just have a look at this when i uh, hold the camera down the side and you just see the the rocking that can go on there. 
So where the, uh, the motor sits into that plastic bogey frame, there's a lot of play. And then with the pivot that we saw on the, uh, on the dummy bogey back there, it has a tendency to sort of just lie, encourage it to lie over. Um, so there's a bit more play in there than, than uh, might be actually necessary. I think that's the, the cause of it, but uh, it definitely seems to affect both models. I wonder whether it's just a, um, an unintentional flaw or whether I'm just missing something completely. Anyway, we'll just uh, lift this one up and have a look. As I say, we've just put uh, new traction tires on it. We'll just pop this uh, handheld phone down and we'll have a, a swift look at the look at the model. So we'll lift it up and we'll just first have a look at the uh, the uh, the dummy bogey on the over here. And you see it it sits on that that pivot and it floats marginally left to right. So it needs some flex as it goes around the, the curves. Otherwise, it would uh, derail. I think. Um, so there must be some thinking as to why this uh, pivot, or what I'm calling a pivot, has been uh, placed to the one side to make it float. So it definitely causes it to sort of lie over, and that that just uh, pivots on on that part of the metal metal part of the chassis there. And you can see even even in here, there's a, there's a little bit of play with the uh, the metal chassis sitting within. The, so the metal block sitting within the, the uh, plastic frame of the bogey there. So we'll just pop that one back in and we'll have a look at the, uh, the other end. So the other end, it sits nice and square, actually rests on the, uh, the under frame and twists quite freely. Whereas the rear one just has that little bit, that ability to, to float either direction like that. And so I think that, uh, that helps it come around the curve. So if I uh, pop this, uh, this bogey off again, I know we've already had a look in here, but since I've changed the traction tires, just in case it was a traction tire causing it to, uh, to lie over, and uh, I don't think it's gonna have any discernible effect. I haven't quite uh, released that. We'll have another. There we go. I'll just pop that off there. And if you excuse fingers, I'll just uh, unclip the wiring. There we go. And pull off the other one. So if we look at the, the motor, you can see it rocking there in, in the bogey frame. And it's just clipped in at either end. So it clips into place there. So that's firmly in place. You can see the motors lie. Lying nice and flat against the plastic. See the parts of the, the bottom of the motor there. See it clipped firmly into place there. So there is a lot of play. So perhaps the uh, the plastic bogey frames worn over years or or, or slightly uh, enlarged through use. I don't think the uh, the motor is going to have shrunk any. So it, it just causes that to, that rocking like that. Uh, and the overall weight of the model and that bogey pivot being slightly off center, I think causes the the motor in general. It wants to lie that way. So uh, I think especially under load when pulling, pulling, the whole model sort of tends to sort of lie over like that. I wonder if anybody else has come across a similar thing, possibly just down to the age of the model and the, the uh, distortion um, through age potentially and use of, of the plastic, uh, plastic frame. We're just gonna open points number seven now and bring the whole train hopefully through onto the outside line. Nice wide angle shot here. And we'll switch the points. Now as she approaches the third radius curve here, gathering a little pace on the way into the uh, elevated section. Just the two traction tires there and she does suffer just the tiniest bit of wheel slip at the top there. I think she'd probably be better suited to uh, wagons and coaches with silver seal wheels. So in 1971, the, uh, the BR Express Parcels van came along and there she is on the bottom of page 21. And so the printing's not terribly good in this catalog. Parcels wagon BR available early 71, it says there. Now I think that was just a, a reuse or the last use of the mold which was, had been used for the very popular um, R14 fish van and the, uh, the R11 goods van which would have been available right back from the uh, sort of mid, mid 50s. Terrific cover. So we'll just pop that to one side.
Now each of the wagons I've got has a box. Um, just have a let's have a look at these two first. I think that might be the, the price I paid for it. We've got these uh, lovely printed labels and the effects of tape all over them. And again, these uh, boxes have all got uh, damage to one degree or another. We'll, we'll pop those to one side. Now the, uh, the one in the later box here, possibly from 73, and she has the plastic wheels as well. And we'll have a look at her. And uh, she is missing any labeling whatsoever. I'm not sure whether it, it would have been on there. It doesn't really look like anything. Well, perhaps something sticky has been there in the past. So we'll pop that down. So you can see just from looking at all four together, the printing varies. And I think this one is probably lighter in color than the rest. And the printing is quite, quite blurry or crude on this particular model. Very dark gray roofs. And you can see it really is just looks very much like uh, the R14 fish fan. If you look at the, the insert picture there, some great information printed on there. See if we can get focus there. Lovely detail on the end. And uh, if we have a look at this one, it's a bit finer on the on the old printing, I think. Still quite shiny plastic, isn't it? But there's a lovely price ticket on the bottom of this one. 30p. It says Platform 2 SW19. So I wonder if anybody remembers that store. So the they're quite pretty things. I think the colour is, is the, the pretty thing, really. It's a very, very nice looking colour for model railways, I think. And there we go, this one. This is in the Hornby Railways box, has, has the plastic single piece of wheels and axles all, all moulded in one. Looking terrific, storming across the bridge there. We're going to have to back off the power a little now to control her on the descent here. Engine braking is not too bad. It's really holding the train back quite nicely. Just listen to the sound as she comes past Cameron here. And with all of the wagons and coaches, it really is quite a pleasing sound, isn't it? With those heavy metal wheels on the locomotive really add to the whole effect. Smoothly through there. And that coach has got a little bit of a, a wobble on the tail end of it if you just... Uh, Keep your eye on it there. Those old crude plastic wheels on pinpoint axles in there. Smoothly around the first straightest curve. Now we've got the uh, utility van and the uh, the, the uh, full parcels coach here. Uh, parcels coach is uh, R425. Utility van R226. Utility van came along in the... Uh, in the 50s and was, has been available in uh, maroon and in green over the years and I believe the uh, parcels coach showed up in uh, 68 so in 68 when the parcels coach showed up it was in uh, electric blue with a platform grey roof and also the uh, utility van was uh, electric blue with a platform grey roof that year and in 69 this this year's uh, catalogue uh, from what I read uh, both the models turned to uh, rail blue with Dark grey roofs, although the, the roofs don't appear to be too too dark in, in this catalogue, although the, I don't think the printing's terribly reliable in this because the, these Mark IIs have very dark roofs as well and they look very, very light in the, the imagery here, don't they? So we'll pop this down, have a, a swift look at the models in the boxes. So here we've got the utility van. Um, I think in this form it was ran from 69 to uh, 70. And then we've got the uh, full parcels here. And again, I think in this form, 69 to, to 71. So we'll just have a, a swift look at them in their boxes. So the box is fairly tidy on this one. There's a slight break in the cellophane there. So there's some lovely rubber stamped printing on the end and some great prices, aren't there? A little bit of a tear in the old cardboard there. And I think the reverse side of the box is, is fairly tidy. Lovely striking imagery there. So we'll pop that one down. We'll have a look at the parcels. You know, so it's got a, a white in card interior in this box. So that's a, quite interesting. So this is in very poor condition. Uh, it's been definitely squashed over the years, this box. We'll have a look at the end there. Again, lovely rubber stamped details there. R425, full parcels brake coach. 
Nothing else says K3. Only got a price there, 90 pence, and that will be the, the price I paid for it. Not quite 90 pence. So I just hold on to it carefully. We'll look at the, the reverse side of the box. I've just removed the, the models from the box and we'll have a, a swift look over them. So we've got the utilities van that has all these doors running down both sides and there are openings there. So it's quite a play feature, isn't it? So we'll just snap those ones shut. They are quite tough to open. Very healthy snap as they, as they go back together. There is some white paint on this model here. I've noticed, but uh, perhaps I'll get around to cleaning that off. And I love the uh, the glazing strips inside with these um, great bars on the windows. And it's just full of detail all the way around it, isn't it? Lovely planking and strapping down the sides of it. And I think this underframe detail was used on, on many of the earlier shorter coaches. And you've got uh, Triang and Made in England. And then that pencil mark, which I presume from speaking to others is, is just the person who checked it or made it or assembled it in the factory. And this model has the pinpoint axles with plastic, plastic wheels, closed axle boxes. And the uh, buffers are just metal and they're pushed into the end. Look at that lovely planking at the end of the model there. And that uh, roof with these uh, strips over the doors to prevent the rain running down, I imagine. So we'll pop that down. Have a look at the parcels. Again, bars on the windows. I really have a thing for bars on the windows. I think the underframe detail of the, the chassis of this model is used for the other the other Mark One coaches in the range. So metal buffers just pushed into the uh, the plastic uh, chassis still. And we've got a little bit of printing on the model. It's not in too bad a condition. There's a little bit of rub on the uh, raised plastic work there. They're great hinges, aren't they? On, on the doors of this model. What have we got written on the bottom of this one? I'll turn it around and have a look. We've got built in Britain. And Triang, again, metal axles with pinpoints and closed axle boxes. You can see this one's got a weight. I had showed some coaches quite recently in the there was no weights in them. Somebody tells me they've they've got a whole bunch of coaches with no no weights in. So I wonder whether there was a, a cost saving measure at some point. And they issued a whole bunch of coaches without metal weights. They seem to run nicely with or without the weights. So again, that dark grey roof. Excuse my fingers leaving marks on there. So we're just going to come to a stop at the end of the platform here and take advantage of the uncoupling ramp there. We just need to back up a little bit, close the couplings and get a better position. There we go. I think we've got a good separation there. And then off into the second radius curve, lovely overhead shot again. We're going to work our way down to uh, points number 18 so we can get back in towards the engine sheds. There we go. Lovely colourful wagons on the left there from the TC range. We'll switch 18 and number 17. And then off we go. Over to the turntable there and uh, up onto the bridge. And I think that's probably it for this week. If you look back again next time, we'll uh, have something else from the range to look at. And thanks again for watching. It really is hugely appreciated. Goodbye now.